welcome. Uh, welcome to the second edition of Top Mark Rants, uh, a very low rent produced uh, video series about things that I have very strong opinions about and I feel like others in the car industry should know. And today, Craigslist for sale by owner. Uh, my handwriting will never get better, uh, so that's about the best we can get here. But you know, wh what's happening here? Uh, Craigslist used to be a really innovative, brand new site. Uh, and it revolutionized the way that people were able to buy and sell cars uh, in the private party market. For years it did, and it still does uh, quite well. But uh, one of the things I want to talk about is, is how it's sort of da gone downhill over the last few years, or I guess 10, 10 to 15 years, um, as the other services continue to innovate and push, push the bounds of what's, what's the new norm. Uh, While well, Craigslist sort of hangs out kind of in the same space they've been forever, um, you know there are a lot of benefits that they that they bring to the table. Uh, it's only five dollars to post something, which makes it very accessible to to even the cheapest cars. Uh, it's quick, um, it's simple. They they don't go over the top in terms of design, so you know the designs stay the same, so it's easy to search. You know they they've done some really good things, but uh, if you look at the Craigslist design versus something a little bit newer, uh, like the car viewers, you'll see that there's a lot of benefits in some of the, the very basic things that car viewers has, has enacted over the for sale by owner cars uh, on Craigslist. Uh, just right off the bat, one of them is that car viewers re requires uh, a VIN, right? A, a VIN is a crucial piece of information uh, if you want to buy a car. Uh, me personally, if I'm looking at different car types, you know, the first thing I do if I'm I'm even somewhat interested in a car, I take that VIN, I go, I do a, a you know either some sort of vehicle history report, whether it's auto check um, or um, Carfax. You know, and if they don't post the VIN, uh, I can't do that. So then I have to send an email, get the VIN from them, and then go through this rigmarole before I can even get any information about the car. Uh, it's hugely annoying. And, and it really just wastes a lot of time. Uh, additionally, the, the fact that they don't require the VINs allows for uh, more opportunities for spam and random posts uh, that aren't actually vehicles uh, in, in the cars and trucks sections of car, uh, Craigslist. So, pretty irritating. The next problem is they generally don't um, skim for any scam. So, uh, the, there are several instances of cars that are basically copied and then uh, like reposted as like spam posts uh, and there's just a, a lot of, of random complicated scammers on the system and Craigslist really doesn't do anything to try to avoid that so it's hard to know whether the car that you're looking at on Craigslist is actually a car uh, somewhere in your neighborhood uh, which is kind of a real pain uh, additionally the the requirements for any kind of description or number of photos is really low so you know you get a bunch of posts where it's somebody's taking a picture of the car at night and it's only like the front quarter of the car uh, what, what are you supposed to do with no description and a picture of the front quarter of a car how am I gonna buy that car and no thing right you no information about anything and I have to follow up you know, my time is somewhat valuable I would say uh, you know, I'm doing this, so maybe not that valuable, but you know, to some extent, I don't want to spend all my time emailing these people who may or may not respond. If we look at some of the other options, oh, going back to to car gurus, they have some minimum settings uh, in terms of what they'll post on their site, and so it just it makes it a much cleaner, easier experience to go through, um, and ultimately not much more expensive because car gurus charges uh, 4.99, um, so actually a cent cheaper. Uh, to post on car gurus and in general they don't they don't charge any fees uh, on top of that unless you're looking to actually transact through their platform which I'll talk about uh, in, in a few minutes but generally going going uh, back to, to sort of the apples to apples comparison you know, car gurus has, has done a very good job at implementing you know, a lot of the benefits that, that you used to get from car Craigslist um, into their system and they haven't added a lot of cost um, which is, you know, in general, pretty cool. The only unfortunate thing is they're, they're because CarGurus makes more money with dealers, uh, you know, 
advertising you know, new cars or, or used cars that are at dealerships, uh, they, that tends to be the focus of the website. So it's a little bit harder to, to solely select um, for sale by owner vehicles. Once you get used to it though, it's not that bad. Looking at some of the other alternatives in, in sort of the, the new uh, kids on the block in terms of the private market options, you've got two really successful um, startups to, uh, for, for some sense of the word, uh, and those are Bring a Trailer and um, Cars and Bids. Cars and Bids is literally less than a year old, um, so it's, it's very much new and up and coming. Uh, they did 2,000 auctions in their first year, which is really cool to see. Uh, sort of riding on the coattails of Bring a Trailer, but you know that's that's for another day. Um, looking at Bring a Trailer, it's it's been around for almost 20 years, um, and it really it really revolutionized the idea of buying a car fully online. Uh, I'm sure they tend to focus on kind of the high end um, nowadays, which is a little bit ironic because it started as a Bring a Trailer service. Essentially, you know, cars that didn't start, so you had to go bring a trailer to pick them up and then you know, deliver them back to your house. And now it's the super high end where they basically only do you know, Porsches and Maseratis and, and Ferraris and things like that. But, but the really cool thing is that, that they just, they built a very simple interface um, with a lot of pictures, a lot of detail in every single listing, and then uh, customer supported or um, user supported comments. Uh, that were really insightful and technical. And so that kind of built this this uh, sort of sense of um, veritability and uh, trust in every listing that went up. It was almost like they had built an ingrained uh, vehicle history report because a lot of these cars were kind of old. Uh, they, they generally fall out of the scope of things like CarMax. Excuse me, not CarMax. Um, of, of, uh, Carfax. They normally fall out of the scope of things like Carfax. So now you've got a system where every listing has a few hundred photos, um, you know, a couple paragraphs of history, uh, background, options, things like that, and you've got hundreds of people posting comments about that exact model, their experiences with it, uh, the major issues that might have to get repaired, and asking the owner whether those have already been repaired. And so you have almost a team of buyers behind you um, that are making you really confident in your purchase. And so that, that really revolutionized um, the for sale by owner market. Granted, they do charge quite a bit for the service. Uh, they charge about 5% buyer's fee, uh, which can be significant, uh, up to $5,000. Um, and then they also charge, depending on the service, you know, anywhere from, I think, 149 uh, to you know, upwards of, of 350 for sort of white glove services um, to list the car on the seller side. So it's not a cheap option, but again, these aren't cheap cars. Uh, but if you look at sort of the system they've created, it would make sense that you know you could potentially uh, integrate this service for sort of lower end vehicles and you know, cut some of those costs out. Um, and ultimately, it will be interesting to see if we see a new service uh, in addition to cars and bids it's somewhat similar, but attacks the mass market. The big things that, that these two auction sites really don't do uh, is the post-sale, right? So what, what happens once you win that auction? Uh, and in both of these cases, they just send you the email of the buyer and the seller, and then you connect and you have to figure things out. Uh, that can be a real pain in the ass, uh, you know, full disclosure, especially if you're not in the same state. You know, do I send uh, the seller money and then they sell, send me the title? Uh, do they send me the car and then the title? Uh, you know, how am I supposed to handle this? And it happens all the time and it's it's amazing that you know, Bring a Trailer has sold 25,000 cars this year probably um, and you know, the, there's nothing to be done about this this huge flaw in, in the transaction process and that goes back to, to something that Craigslist had problems with as well. You know, you, you don't really want to bring a handful of cash uh, to some parking lot where you're going to buy a car from somebody you've never met. So there's a lot of you know safety and, and just like security issues around uh, the transfer of money, and so that's something actually that uh, car gurus is as well uh, trying to take on with their car gurus pay. Um, again, it's only five dollars, which is crazy that they charge that little, 
But for five dollars, basically, you can transact almost fully online um, through their first sale by owner um, sales process, and they they will create an, uh, an escrow account, so I can send money into escrow. Um, we verify that I get the car from the seller, and then you know we both accept, and then the money goes to the seller. And you've got you know, car gurus behind you, so you, you know that it's a platform that's going to kind of support you should something go wrong. It's really a, a, a cool system, um, and it's interesting that it hasn't taken off uh, as much as I would have expected. Um, but I think we'll have to watch it because it's relatively new in the space, um, and, and I think there's a there's a lot of room to grow there. If you're looking to just sell your car specifically, um, you know one of the things that that's new on on that front is the ability to sell things you know, fully online to dealers. It used to be that you had to you know either go to individual dealers, get quotes, and try to you know negotiate trade ins and, and all that nonsense. But now all you have to go to is Carvana.com, CarMax.com, Vroom. You know any of these major services, and they'll give you a quote immediately up front uh, to just buy your car in cash. You don't have to trade it in. You don't have to negotiate none of that. So um, that's definitely been making waves. Is Carvana is going to sell you know, 300,000 cars this year, um, and they sold none in 2014. So just huge astronomical growth in this space. Um, and so I would I would hazard you just to if you're going the for sale by owner route with your vehicle, definitely take it to these sites um, and check out what you can get. Because after selling a few cars uh, for some people around me, I found that in some cases I could actually get more just selling it to one of these online services than I ever could have gotten uh, in the, the private market. Uh, so it's definitely, and it's, you know, it takes no time. So if you're looking, that, looking to do something like that, definitely test it out. Even better, Go to topmark.com and then you can just get all of your offers from these services all in one place. It takes about five minutes, not a lot of work, uh, and you know you get to see what your car is worth and what what the dealers will pay you to trade it in. We also provide like an estimated private party price so you can compare whether it makes sense. Um, tends to be that the nicer cars uh, end up being the private party. You can make a lot more uh, because dealers don't pay as much for the luxury cars because it's high risk for them. And then things like, you know, a Toyota Corolla, oftentimes it's easier just to send it to these services than to deal with trying to sell a private party. So check it out. Thanks for listening and uh, leave any comments in the comment section and I'll try to get back to them.